Welcome back. Those of you who have experienced problems with vibration, especially going through 3000 RPM when you're accelerating in the higher gears, and also if you've experienced that horrible bang and jerk when you accelerate away, will probably be considering replacing the MVH kit with another set of bevel box mountings. My upgrade kit has a complete set of those mountings and this video will show you how to remove the bevel box and the MVH kit. The subsequent video will show you how to fit in my bevel box mountings. When jacking the rear of the car up to support it you can go onto one of these brackets here or underneath the aluminium here but don't go in the middle of the aluminium floor because you'll just push it all in and dent it. Make sure you're under this edge of this panel here if yours has got those panels on some don't because there's a chassis member on the inside when you've got it jacked up put it on axle stands and the axle stands are best put on the tube which supports the petrol tank but that tube is only supported at this front end so keep the axle stands near the front of the tube leave yourself room to get on here and remove this MVH kit. It's also a good idea to have something underneath the back wheel just in case the vehicle should roll forward off the axle stands. You will see looking over there I have some wooden chocks under the front wheels because obviously the handbrake only works on the rear wheel. The best thing is to remove the bevel box from the MVH kit first. So to do that we remove the four bolts holding the prop shaft onto the bevel box input flange. Mark the flanges so you can put them back as they were. I don't think it makes any difference from a balance point of view, but better safe than sorry. Here there are two vertical bolts going through with nuts on the bottom. Remove those. And down here you can see there are two horizontal ones going through. Take those out as well. Then we'll move to the back of the bevel box underneath the car. Underneath the vehicle now, looking at the back of the bevel box, we can see here and here two 12mm bolts that have got to be taken out and then we can lift the bevel box out of the MVH kit. Now that all the bolts are out, we need to pry the bevel box up out of the front of the H kit because it squ gets squashed up with the bolts. Lifting the nose, pull the belt to one side and then out she comes. You'll notice I have one leg inside the car don't try and do it with both feet outside the car, you'll damage your back. The swinging arm bearings are tapered rollers and they live in the end of the swinging arm in here and you'll see a nice plastic plug to stop the dirt getting in. Several of the vehicles I've taken apart, including my own one, have no plastic plug on the outside. You can see the thing is full of shit and I might possibly have to replace the roller bearing. I'll take it out and examine it and we'll find out. To stop the prop shaft from dangling down and interfering with anything just temporarily tie it up to one of the hoops with a cable tie. The next job is to remove the central aluminium panel. Just four screws down each side. Some vehicles don't have that panel fitted but if yours has remove it. Also remove the two rectangular panels at the back, one on each side, you can see the other one over there. If you don't have those rectangular panels fitted, remove the bolts which hold the big plate up around that area. 
and now to start removing the MVH kit forward beam we need to remove these two very long horizontal bolts there's a nut on one of them, goes right the way through, you can see I've got the spanner on the other end and they require a 16mm spanner take them right out, we have replacements those of you who have purchased my upgrade for the bevel box mountings will find in the kit two of these long bolts they are M10 by 80 millimeters long and they go in in place of the long ones that we took out at the front of the MVH kit that can be done put those in, tighten them fully I won't claim to understand the geometry of this uh, rather over engineered and complex handbrake mounting mechanism it needs to be double sided obviously because there are left hand drive cars which need the handbrake over here but what all this business down the front here this clamp ar arrangement with two bits of channel is about I'm really not sure but to be on the safe side those two bolts go back in, tighten them fully and then there won't be any problems Having removed the various cable clips from the side of the arm and got this little wire out here that sometimes runs underneath it we can then pull it back slightly, tip it on it OK, we'll pull it up There we go Here we can see the rear cross beam of the MVH kit which is held in place by two nuts and bolts going right the way through the chassis here and here. We take those bolts out and then we can knock these brackets down off the chassis tubes. So now the bolts are out we find it a fairly straightforward business to drive those things off the bottom. Underneath where those two bolts have just been put in we'll see this cross member which is the uh, part of the f mounting for the handbrake and underneath it and I have no idea why the factory chose to put these underneath but they are all underneath be far better if they went over the top you'll find this uh, thing here which has got two petrol pipes in it and a brake hose. They are obviously very vulnerable where they pass under there. The best thing to do is to fasten them up in position as flat as possible with some cable ties. And there you can see I've looped a long cable tie over the top on both sides of this cross member. Keeps this thing up out of the way. A better solution would be one day when uh, you've got all the petrol pipes and the brake hoses disconnected to reroute them over the top. Maybe you don't want to be doing that now.